Okay, let's see where we were here. Uh, this is diagram of diodes. Okay, on the right hand side, negative, positive. Here's a junction. This is showing the actual diode. This is more the schematic symbol. Notice this side with that stripe. That's the side with the stripe. That's your negative side. Okay, there's an actual diode laying the same direction as our drawing is. Okay, and that's the cathode side. That's the negative side. Okay, as far as checking these diodes, uh, whether or not they're good or not, whether or not they're good or bad, uh, let's see, I got one connected right here to my probes. Notice the black probe is on the side with the stripe, the negative. Okay. Uh, hopefully you got diode checking ability. That symbol. Okay. Let's turn this on. Now this says short. Um, my digital multimeter uh, just tells you if it's good or bad or short. Uh, the reason it's saying short is because this is a germanium diode and uh, the digital multimeter is set up for checking more of the standard silicon diodes. If I check, let me give me one second, I'll check, uh, I'll show you a real silicon diode and the reading I get from that. Excuse the crate, uh, I gotta set the camera down, son of a. Hold on. Wouldn't be one of Paul's videos if I didn't set the dang camera down. Alright. I think we got it now. Okay. Uh, okay. There's a circuit that I made with some silicon diodes. You can see, I got the stripe again to the left. But now, the meter is reading good. Now see, I also had the secondary thing on there. It shows the voltage drop across it. A silicon diode usually has about 0.6 volts across it. So that's another way you could tell whether or not it's good. Because when we checked that germanium diode, hold on one second, let me set you down again. I'm going to connect the germanium diode again quick. Okay, get this end. And get that end. Okay. So there's our diode again, our germanium. It says short, but you notice at the bottom, the voltage is 0 0.39, 0 0.4, and that's correct. That's what a germanium diode, the voltage drop across it should be. So, that's how you check your diodes. Uh, capacitors, well, Hopefully you got a another uh, reading on there. Capacitor. That's a capacitor and induction coil checking. Okay. Now let me set you down one second while I attach a capacitor. Almost. Okay, now I have, I'm across the one capacitor here. Now these capacitors, it does not matter uh, the black and red, which side you have them connected to. Okay, these, polarized one, it does. You notice also on these polarized capacitors, there's, uh, if you could, where the heck did it go, there it is hard to see. There is a little negative minus sign on there. There you go. That tells you which side is negative. So watch that when you're putting your circuit together that you have those aiming the right direction. Okay, anyhow we got our small capacitor in there and you can see it checks .12 Approximately 0.1, that's what our capacitor is. Uh, unfortunately, my digital multimeter will not go, it maxes out at the range of these other capacitors, so I have a hard time telling whether or not they're blown out or not. 
I have to uh, take them out of the circuit and try a new one. Uh, I'll know if they're bad because I'm used to getting some voltage readings, and if I try a circuit, all of a sudden I get no readings. <laughs> I know it's usually one of these capacitors. <laughs> so, all right, that's checking them. Let me move on here. This is a diagram here of our circuit. Okay, there's where the antenna attaches. There's where our ground attaches. Now here's the polarized ones. Negative on that side, positive on the upper side. All positive towards the positive. Okay, here, if we go with a dual circuit design, ignore that little cigarette burn mark there. <laughs> Then they attach like this. Okay, on my circuits here, it's a good idea, let me show you, it's a good idea to attach a small extra wire right there and right there because then you got a place to that's your output. I normally attach my probes right there, but it's nicer and more convenient to have an extra wire there. You could always attach your digital multimeter or whatever your load off of there then. Uh, let's see, next, I gotta watch my time. Okay, height of our antenna pole is 41 feet. Length of the antenna wire is 58 feet. Okay, our ground pipe diameter an inch and five eighths. The depth is five foot deep. Uh, all the wire gauge size is 0.032. I think that's 20 gauge. Actually, it's a uh, double dipped too. They call it uh, like a double varnish type finish on it to protect it. Uh, coils that I've used are wound onto two and five, uh, two and three eighths diameter PVC pipe, 20 inches long. Now that's our coils that I've been using. Uh, there's like there's 20 inches. There's like an inch at this side, and then I begin my eight inches of coil, and then I attached uh, the end of the coil, like it's two coils attached to one another. One coil here, one coil here, and we just have the end of the coil attached to the other coil here. Uh, so, anyhow, that's that. Um, let's see what else I want to show you. All right, those are our coils that I'm talking about. And there's that little wire in the middle that I soldered, going from one coil to the other. Okay, an inch at one end, two inches here, one inch up there. So we got eight inches and eight inches. Okay, uh, let's see, we're going on eight and a half minutes here. YouTube is 10 minutes. Uh, let's see, the antenna, here's my wire. Here's my spool of wire. MWS, I forgot where I got that from now. Started out with 15 pounds. I use the same wire on my Tesla coils. Magnet wire. Okay, we're coming up on 10 minutes. I'm going to stop this. We're going to go into a part three with this. Not much more. Part three should be a shorter one. All right, we'll see you at part three.